Hey guys, welcome to Yin Foundations. We're gonna get started in butterfly pose, so come to seated and bring the soles of your feet together so your toes point forward, your heels are in, and your knees open out. Go ahead and grab your feet and then draw your feet in towards your body. Allow the hips to soften down towards the mat. And then on an inhale, draw your chest up towards the sky so you create some length within your spine. And then exhale, just begin to fold over and down into the very first pose of this foundation class. So whether you're starting this flexibility and beyond program and you're at the very beginning of this eight week program or you're already somewhere deep into the program, it's always good to come back to the basics, to come back to the foundations. And we sometimes call this the Zen beginner's mind. The Zen beginner's mind is a mind that doesn't think that it knows it all. It's a mind that's open to receive, to learn, to grow, and maybe to even understand in a deeper capacity. So in this opening pose, allow your mind to become as empty as possible. And whatever your day has been like, just begin to allow the events of the day to fade away and any unnecessary thoughts, noise, or chitter chatter, just letting it all go as you give yourself full permission to indulge within your yin practice. So we'll be holding the majority of these poses about three to five minutes. And we move through those three laws or those three guidelines of the yin pose. The first law is you find your edge within the pose. So you find that, that boundary of resistance and as you encounter that wall, instead of forcing your way through it or pushing your way through it, instead of meeting it with aggression, you just gently lean into it. You meet it compassionately and you meet it with kindness. And as Mark Twain said, Kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. So it's a very, very powerful force. And it's also congruent with that energy of yin. And then the second law of the yin pose is to just become as still as you can. And that stillness really becomes a doorway into a deeper dimension on a physical level as you access the deep fascia within the body. And that stillness also becomes a entry point to a deeper dimension inside of your own mind so that you're not stuck superficially on the surface of the mind, but you're actually accessing a greater depth within you. And then the last third law of the yin pose is just surrendering to time. In fact, see if you can allow yourself within these practices, within these poses, to let yourself transcend time, place, and space because your mind becomes so present. And the deeper your presence, the deeper your experience becomes. Take a last few breaths there.
Nice, you guys, from here, go ahead and easily come all the way back up to seated. And then just bring your hands to your outer knees, close your knees together, and then swing your legs off around to the side and make your way to a tabletop pose. And then from tabletop pose, we'll come into a child's pose. So bring your big toes together and allow your knees to open out towards the edges of your yoga mat and allow your forehead to either rest down onto the ground or as we do here with flow, we can take a block and we can actually put the block right underneath that forehead so that the weight of the head is supported. And this is important because when the head is supported, it allows the musculature around that neck to relax and to soften. And then this allows your mind to be more calm. So feel free to use these blocks within these practices to get creative so that those props are there to help you find your sweet spot within the pose and to really tailor the pose to you and your uniqueness and to you and your anatomy. And then as we hold this child's pose, I'd like to invite you to bring in intention into this eight week flexibility beyond program. What inspired you to do this program? What quality is it that you wish to align with, to strengthen and to reinforce? Maybe that's balance or wholeness, or health, calmness, serenity, wisdom. But get clear, get specific as to what your intention is. And then you can take that quality and you can insert it into the phrase, I am. So if your intention is health and the phrase becomes, I am health. And then you just repeat that several times silently and internally inside of your mind. Feel free to allow the repetition of that affirmation, that intention to fade away and just clear the sky of your awareness. Just continue to allow your mind to become spacious and clear and vast like the open sky. Take a last few breaths there. And nice and easily begin to exit out a child's pose as you come all the way up to a tabletop pose, all fours position. And then from tabletop pose, we'll step back to plank pose, upper push up, or you can modify it, keep the knees down on the ground and the knees behind the hips. Take an inhale there in plank pose. And then exhale, lower slowly all the way down, 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 onto the ground, right onto your belly. And then we'll come into Sphinx pose. So slide the elbows forward right underneath your shoulders. The forearms are parallel to each other like railroad tracks or skis. Make sure that your elbows right underneath the shoulder, not in front, not behind it, but right underneath so you stack those two joints. Spread the fingers, 
extend back to the toes and allow the chin ever so slightly to tuck down so your cervical spine and your neck is long. So come into a pose that brings suppleness and health back into our spine. And as far as the breathing goes in a yin yoga practice, you can allow your breath to be whatever it naturally needs to be. Sometimes you'll be in a yoga pose that feels really effortless and therefore you can allow your breath to become very soft and subtle and effortless. And then other times you'll be in a yoga pose that's more intense and more challenging. Maybe you're exposing a lot of tension or stiffness or atrophy in the body. And then it may make sense in that case to actually breathe more fully and more deeply to allow your breath to be the catalyst to really help you dissolve and melt tension away. And this speaks to that important point that your intuition is your real teacher. And that intuition is there to instruct you from within. So you listen to the language of your bodily sensation. And that'll tell you exactly what to do, how far to go into the pose. Or maybe when you need to back out of the pose. When you need to breathe deeper, when you need to breathe more soft. And I'll just be here to remind you throughout these practices to pay attention to that inner teacher. And at this point, if you feel like you'd like a deeper variation, feel free to come into the seal pose. So seal pose, slide the hands forward a little bit, spread the fingers out, and then press down into the palms like Danielle's doing here. So she's driving into the palms, she's lifting up to the chest, and this becomes a little bit more medicine for your spine. So it's a deeper variation than the sphinx pose but you're still in the same ballpark of bringing your spine into that healthy backbend or what we call spinal extension. We'll take a last minute or so here, either in your sphinx or your seal variation. Take one last inhale in your seal or your sphinx. And then exhale, softly allow the elbows to float back down, release the chest down and slide your hands back by your ribs. And then press your way up to a tabletop, all fours position, tuck the toes underneath the feet, lift the hips up into the sky, downward face and dog. And we won't be here too long in the down dog, but for the few breaths that we're here, feel free to walk out your dog, just alternating one heel down towards the ground at a time, pedaling out through those feet and stretching through the backs of the legs, stretching those calf muscles out, stretching those hamstrings and the heels out should feel nice to just work out those, those kinks and those knots. Good, and then from here, go ahead and float your right leg off the ground on an inhale. 
and then sleeping swan on the exhale swing your right shin all the way forward to the top of the mat let the right knee flare out to the right relax your left knee down onto the ground coming into that sleeping swan so you'll release the top of that back left foot so option here if you like i'm going to come back over here to my my friend flo who needs a lot of help so we're going to help him out by taking one of these blocks and we're going to slide that right underneath that right hip and that helps to mitigate any impingement being in that front right knee so if you have any knee issues definitely use that block then as you're ready begin to allow the torso to drape out over that front right knee right shin and again just like previously we may want to take a second block and we could put that underneath the forehead or he can use his hands and create a little tower of support just depends on what feels best for him and then another option in addition to placing the block underneath the right hip we could also take a block and we could place it underneath that back thigh so i'm going to work here with brian and i'm just going to slide another block underneath that left thigh so we have a block there and we also have a block over on his right hip so now he's double supported so in these poses we need to be able to discern the difference between good pain and bad pain good pain is like when you go get a massage and the massage therapist is digging into these knots of tension in the body and it can hurt it can be painful but that's good pain you know on the other end of that pain you're going to feel so much better the pain that we definitely want to avoid is a sharper pain when bones are grinding into bones or we're pinching a nerve and so that impingement or that lack of integrity within a joint in the body is something that we want to avoid so then we can use the blocks to help us so that we're never impinging we're never collapsing in a way that could actually be harmful for the body so you find your edge you find your breath you find your mind in that state of just being present and sometimes the biggest challenge in yin yoga is not even the physical challenge it's the mental challenge of not allowing your mind to start planning for something in the future or to dwell on something that's already happened in the past but your mind will wander off at times that's natural it's normal it happens to me the practice becomes any time that you notice the mind drifting away can you gently return your attention back to the breath that's happening right here right now and back to the sensation that you're feeling in this pose right now and just in the same way that you can strengthen muscles on your body by repeating an exercise you can also strengthen a muscle of focus concentration and attention and that concentration is the prerequisite to the meditation so at the same time you're bringing greater and greater flexibility into the body you're also giving your mind a workout and this is why we call the program flexibility and beyond because it's bigger and greater than just the flexibility component 
They say that 90% of people that walk into a doctor's office due to a medical issue is related to stress. So if we really want to address well-being, health, and wellness, then we have to factor in our mind state and shifting from a state of stress and survival and into a state of calmness, serenity, so that we're not just surviving, but we're thriving within our lives. Staying with your breath, slowly begin to ease your way back up onto your hands. Tuck your left toes underneath your left foot, lift your left knee off the ground, and then take that right leg, and then just pull it all the way back and up into a three-legged downward facing dog. Splay open through the right hip as you bend the right knee and then that becomes like a counter stretch for that right hip. So just a nice, big external rotation in that hip. Straighten that right leg back out as you inhale. Set it back down onto the mat as you exhale. And then from here, go ahead and lift your left leg up on the inhale. And then sleeping swan on the other side. Swing your left shin all the way up top of the mat. Slide your right knee, right leg back. Feel free if it's helpful and useful to slide the block underneath your left hip, perhaps underneath your back right thigh. And then as you're ready, just allow your torso to begin to drape like a heavy velvet blanket out over top that front left leg. And now we're not just interested in the theory of yin yoga, we're interested in the experience of yin yoga. And as Confucius said, I hear and I forget I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So through the practice, we have an experience. And then through the experience, we really begin to understand things on a deeper and deeper level. And this is why in India, they say that experience is the greatest teacher. And every experience that we encounter on our yoga mat or in our lives, it always has a teaching within it. So whether we're moving through something that's incredibly pleasurable or something that's very difficult, intense, confronting and challenge, there's always teaching within it. And if we pay attention, then we receive the wisdom that comes out of that teaching. If we're not present and we're not paying attention, then that event will show up over and over and over within our lives. Pema Chodron, the great Buddhist monk says, Nothing ever goes away until it teaches you what you need to learn. So if you notice the same thing showing up over and over and recurring, it's probably because you haven't learned the lesson yet. And as soon as you do, 
then you'll break that pattern and that cycle. you guys that's it for that one take your time slowly begin to transition yourself up as we say no hurries no worries just taking your time lift the right toes underneath and in lift that right knee up and then thread your left leg all the way back and up three-legged dog bend your left knee splay your left hip open and just allow your hip joint to take a nice, big, open yawn. Straighten out your left leg on that inhale, and then release the left foot down onto the mat, downward dog, exhale. And then in your downward dog, take an inhale, press the hips back, and then release the knees down onto the mat, and then walk your knees forward about maybe three quarters up your yoga mat. And then bring your big toes together, open your knees outward and sit back onto your heels. So we're gonna come into what we call saddle pose. So in saddle pose, you open out the knees, the big toes come together. And if this is intense on your knees, you can always take a block or two blocks and you can slide that underneath your sit bones so that you're actually propped up, kind of like a, a samurai warrior. If your knees feel more healthy and more open, then we'll start to lean back. So you can come back onto your palms. You could come back onto your elbows and your forearms. And some of you may want to come all the way onto your back. But remember that first law of the yin pose is that you find your edge but you never push your way through the edge. So be respectful as to what it is that your body's speaking to you and make sure that you give your body the perfect dosage of medicine that it needs. So this straddle stretch is a great stretch for the feet, the ankles, and those of us that are runners or athletic or do anything that's repetitive within the lower body, we're giving our feet a counter stretch as we move from flexion into extension. We stretch the tops of the thighs. We give a healthy stretch to the knees. And those of us that are leaning back, we're also putting some positive pressure into the lower back and the sacrum. So we have some connective tissue in that area. And by putting positive stress and pressure there, that connective tissue in the sacrum becomes stronger and more resilient.
Beautiful, you guys. Slowly, slowly begin to transition all the way back up. And as you get back up, just bring your hands in front of your knees for a moment. Shift your weight into your hands away from the knees and then crawl your knees forward all the way to the top of your yoga mat. Cross the feet behind your release down onto those sit bones. And then extend your legs straight out in front of you along the mat. And then with your legs straight out in front of you, take your arms up to the sky. So big inhale, reach up nice and tall. And then seated forward fold, what we call caterpillar pose in the yin yoga. And then because we're holding caterpillar for a long time, it's okay to allow your back to round. In fact, that can be a very, very positive thing for the connected tissues that support your spine. So just letting your back, letting your spine naturally round. And each inhale, allowing your heart to extend forward towards your feet, towards your toes. And then each exhale to allow the chest to dip down. And if you happen to have a history of lower back pain or maybe herniated or slipped discs, then you're gonna put a little bend into the knees. And then that way you're not creating any excessive strain in that lower back. So again, always looking for the good pain always avoiding the bad pain. Then for the last minute or so that you hold this pose, let's come back to that intention that we set at the beginning. Come back to your quality, come back to the phrase, I am, and then just repeat it slowly, patiently, and consistently. Muhammad Ali said, it's the repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. So never underestimate the power of your mind and how your thoughts lead to actions. Your actions lead to beliefs. Those beliefs lead to habits. Habits leads to a personality, and your personality is what creates your reality. So if we want to enhance or animate or transform our reality, it all traces back to those thoughts that are moving through the mind. And we get to choose which thoughts we want to feed and we have that choice to feed the thoughts that are in alignment with who we want to be and we don't have to buy into the thoughts that are bogging us down and limiting us and bringing negativity into our mind and therefore into our life so we use that tool of the affirmation 
to calibrate to what it is that we want to cultivate within our lives. A few more repetitions. Then allow the repetition to go. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose. And then out the mouth, exhale, let it go. Sigh it out. And then as you're ready, slowly roll yourself out of the caterpillar pose. And then go ahead and release all the way down onto your back. So we'll come back into reclining position. As you come onto the back, go ahead and reach forward, grab your shins, pull your knees and your thighs into your belly for a moment. Just hug the knees in. And then go ahead and cactus your arms out. So bend the elbows, palms to the sky, or you could spread the arms out wide like a T. And then allow your knees to drape over to the right side, just coming into just a double knee, double knee twist. And just feel yourself over and over, just returning back to your breath, returning back to being present, returning back to being home within your own body, your own self. By Angelo said, I long as does every other human to be at home wherever I find myself. So home doesn't have to be a physical place that we go to. Home can be a place that actually exists within our own body, our own hearts. Nice, and then bring your knees back up to neutral as you inhale. And then same thing to the other side as you exhale, just let the knees drape all the way over to the left. And allow your right shoulder blade to be heavy on the floor. And then you can bring your gaze wherever it feels right, whether that's looking out over that right arm Sometimes it's nice to have the face straight up to the ceiling, or you can even turn the gaze same direction that your knees are going in, and that can be a nice soft variation for your head and your neck. See where it feels right to position it. and then bring your knees all the way back up to neutral grab the shins draw your knees your thighs into your belly and on and then help curl your forehead up to your knees give your whole body a big hug a big squeeze and then corpse pose release down onto the back extending your legs out opening your arms out a little bit wide just finding a place of comfort. Find a place 
of stillness. And then find a place of just simply, simply letting go that you dissolve yourself into stillness, serenity, and source. Shavasana. Everybody from here, nice and easily, just start to bring your awareness back onto your mat, back into your body as you lightly move the fingertips and the toes around as a way to reactivate physical presence. And officially, we're going to say that this Yin Foundation practice is now complete. Good job. Be flexible and supple in your body. Be strong and calm in your mind. And may the Tao be with you.